Hey guys, our decline here, average picker. So I'm doing some late night challenge lock building and finished up these guys. They're the triplets. They're all keyed to the same key. And uh, they're actually really, these locks suck, man. They're really quite fragile. I've already had springs trying to pop out from that little gap in there. It sucks. Um, but yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is just ship these three out together with one key. Um, and they're all keyed identical. The drivers were weird. The drivers had all been replaced with uh, reversed T-pins. So there was not a whole lot of pin up in the driver section to work with. And you can see from that bidding, um, you know, that doesn't leave a whole lot of interesting stuff with the key pins either. I mean, that's pretty just much a straight middle of the road cut. But I started working on this other one. And I don't know how you guys do this. Normally what I do is I just shape pins. That's it. I don't, I just put the pin in and I shape it. And then later on in the process, um, I start messing around with uh, how, you know, where it's gonna set at rest and how deep it's gonna go in. And I, if I've shaped a lot of pin, I'm, I try to get it to sit lower as a driver. But I think what I'm gonna do, we'll see what happens here, is I'm gonna try to mark these roughly where the shear line is and only shape those portions and I'm not going to mess with uh, rekeying this one too much. Go with the stock key probably. or Actually, I don't even know if I have a key for this one, so I'll have to cut a key. But I'm going to go with the stock key pinning. Um, so, yeah. And we'll see where that gets it. Um, that way I won't be not wasting a pin, but, you know, it kind of sucks to do some big shaping. And then you stick it in there and find out it's not interacting with the shear line at all. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give this a little try and see how this goes. And uh, yeah, we'll cut the video back on probably and take a look at it. Okay, so you can see I decided to start with the second driver and it's the longest and we've got it chucked up and you can see there's not a whole lot of pin there to work with. Um, so yeah, this will be interesting. Uh, let's see what happens. What's the worst that can happen, right? You know, worst comes to worst, we just uh, chuck everything up and redo it or send it as is and do something, go back to the old method <laughs> on another one. Yeah, just a little bit of quick shaping and there's what we shaped it into. Pretty much a T-pin, uh, but we got a slightly beveled edge there. And what I'm hoping is that we went over our mark. Um, and that was just because of the size of the file. But all I'm really hoping for is that's going to start to feel like the end of a spool and then hopefully with that little taper it will pop up over the shear line and if we match it to the key pin, well, um, I'm hoping the key pin will just hop right up into that shear line along with it. So let's unchuck it here real quick and see. This is the most shallow um, of them. so. Now, I've been filling construction holes, and I'm rather sick of filling construction holes. So I think we're going to leave this guy, and we're just going to make sure we shape this pin so he doesn't fall in there. But yeah, so you can see he sits in there, and he's quite wobbly. Not great. Uh, but, yeah, maybe if we can do a good match with him, should have a good chance of him coming out to be something kind of decent. So I think we'll... Move over to pin one now, so we can see here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is at work. I was trying to figure out square footage that somebody needed, I think, or that was a measurement for a carpet. I don't know. Anyway, I like to make notes on my hand because I feel like if I lose the note, that means I lost my hand, and in that case, I have a pretty good excuse and nobody can uh, get too upset, right? So you can see there, we've got a good bit more, oops, we got a good bit more pin to work with. So it's down in there a lot more. So that should hopefully be a more fun pin. Okay, I had to reset this one a little bit. So it's actually moved back a tad and it needs some finishing. Um, but you can kind of see the basic idea of what's going on here. Um, so the bottom one was pretty easy because it, I put the line where the shear line was going to be pretty flush um, to the chuck and I kind of just came in 
gave it a little bit of a scrub to get it marked up. And then I ended up just using the side of that, ran it in, and then went in and hit it. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Well, I hit it with the round, hit it with the round uh, jewelry file over and over, and I'm gonna do it some more just to sink it a little bit more. Uh, but just kinda hit it through with that as it was spinning um, to kinda round it off. The top one, I'm sure some of you know, and some of you may not because you haven't tried this yet, but it can be a little difficult sometimes to get started right where you want to. So I just went in with a very uh, beat up box cutter and I started a pretty good groove exactly where I wanted it. And that let me take the slower approach of going in with the triangular jewelry file and I was able just to catch that notch um, and just run it through there to widen it up some. Um, and this worked a lot better than, you know, if you go to one of these thicker ones, it's gonna take it off faster. Uh, but it's a little bit hard to place it exactly where you want it. So kind of scoring it up a little bit uh, helps. And then you just come in, you know, and it's gonna take a little longer to finish it, but it's gonna work out a little bit better, I think. Um, so yeah, we're only two pins in, but it's kind of nice. I, the, having marked the pins to know how much pin I have to actually work with as opposed to shaping a pin and then deciding to try to make that much of the pin work in each lock. Um, it's, I guess it's eliminated a little bit of question mark. Um, yeah, I mean, I've only done it for two pins, so it's hard to draw an absolute opinion. I think I'm gonna do it more. I don't think I'm gonna do it all the time um, right now, but so far I'm liking it. Okay, and there we go. And you can see on pins three and Four, um, I still have a little bit of black line left, so those that's roughly where the shear line is, is at the bottom of that line. So a little bit of those pins will still sit standard in there. Um, yeah, I guess even six has a, oh, just a hair. That's probably just marker markets, but it's all in there. Um, yeah, so that's, I kind of liked doing it that way. That made it a nice way to know uh, that the whole thing was actually going to get used and not have to finagle around. I'm not real happy with how 5 came out. Um, yeah. Not exactly what I had planned. I was going to polish him up a little bit. Um, but I figure eh, I'll leave him a little bit rough. He might stand a little bit better of a chance than that way than being a mess up that uh, I then try to polish out it into something else. Um, so yeah, and then I always just like to kind of touch up and do something uh, with the bottom pins. I do think on two, I'm asking quite a lot for him to raise up that high. Um, I was getting a little nervous. Cause I'm really, I want this guy to overset. Um, but I think there's a little too much on top. But I was getting a little bit nervous uh, just because of the width of the files and stuff. It was getting a little hard to get up close to there. Um, maybe he'll go back in the chuck. We'll see if we can take a couple nudges more off of him. Um, otherwise that's, yeah, that's quite a lift there for someone to, for it to sneak past anyway, um, our slightly beveled pin up there. So yeah, there we go. That uh, is pretty much, unless we put them back in there and touch some of them up, what we're looking at. All right, guys. Um, yeah. Have a good night. <laughs>